Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm taking a look at the 9800 Lumen TM9K Tech from Nightcore. Let's check it out. So I'll give you a quick look at the box the TM9K Tech comes in. A nice product shot right here and check this out on the side. Tiny Monster Series. Then nothing else except for on the bottom we have some of the features and I'll get in real close. So if you guys wanna pause the screen, you can. I'll be going over some of these, but not all of them. So go ahead. There we go. So let's take this bad boy out of the box and there's a TM9K tag still in the box. And yes, it does come with a holster here with Velcro and the D-ring on the back. You guys already know I'm not the biggest fan of these types of holsters, but for what it is, it's fine. So in this plastic bag here, we have our standard lanyard here. And then next we have a split ring pocket clip, black. And then last we have our type A to type C charging cable. Then the last things in the box are some warranty information and our standard user guide. So now let's take out the TM9K TAC from Nightcore, and I'll give you guys a nice close-up of this bad boy right here. And while you guys are checking this out, let's talk about some of the features. It has a maximum output of 9,800 lumens and a maximum throw of 280 meters. Now that's an upgrade from the TM9K's 9,500 lumens and 268 meters of throw. And pushing out those 9,800 lumens are nine Cree XP L2 HD LEDs. It features five lighting modes, plus strobe, and everything is controlled with dual tail switches. The body here is made of aero grade aluminum alloy and has a type three hard anodized finish. And inside we have a built-in 5,000 milliamp hour 21700 rechargeable lithium ion battery. Yes, I did say built-in, we'll get to that later. And you can charge that built-in 21700 through the USB type C port that's located near the head of the flashlight. It's also impact resistance up to one meter and has an IP rating of 68. That means it's completely dustproof and is submersible up to six feet. All right, so what about the dimensions here? It has a length of 4.92 inches, a head diameter of 1.57 inches, and a tube diameter of 1.02 inches. And while we're at it, the tail diameter is exactly 1.1 inches. And by my weight test, it comes in at 7.71 ounces. That's 218 and a half grams. So let's talk about the TM9K TAC from Nightcore so we can determine if this is the right flashlight for you. So let me tell you, this little thing is pretty impressive. 9,800 lumens in a pretty small little body. I mean, this thing is under five inches long, so that's pretty darn impressive. I've been using this for the past week now, and let me tell you, this thing is a monster, but it's extremely limited. And I think you guys already know what I'm talking about. The runtime on turbo for this is extremely low, but at the same time, very impressive just because of the amount of light that comes out of this. So I'll give you guys a look right down the barrel at those nine Cree XP L2 HD LEDs here. That is awesome. So if you're familiar with the original TM9K, you're probably gonna spot what's different about this already. It has this tactical ring on the back here that's not removable. And honestly, that's about it. Everything else looks to be almost exactly the same as the original release. It still maintains that crenellated bezel right here. It's not sharp at all, but it's still there. It still has the USB Type-C charging port in the same spot. You can see the dual tail switches right here are exactly the same. And yes, it still has the status light indicator right there. Everything looks to be the same except for the lumens and throw here. So we have 9,800 lumens and 280 meters of throw in the new TM9K TAC. And that's all from 9,500 lumens and 268 meters of throw. So that boost in lumens and throw is very much appreciated, especially when this costs exactly the same as the TM9K. That's right, they're asking $159.95 for this and the original model. So you might as well just go with this guy because you're getting the boost in lumens and throw. And a lot of that is due because now they're using 9 Cree XP L2 HD LEDs instead of 9 Cree XP L HD V6 LEDs. And overall, this thing is very well built. It feels very high quality when you're holding it. It's very, very solid. And that's due to the fact that this all is one piece. You cannot unscrew anything here. Now that is a positive for some and a big negative for most. And I happen to be in the big negative category because the built-in battery here is one of my biggest negatives of this flashlight. You have a built-in 5,000 milliamp hour 21700 battery in there. And as you guys know, if that goes bad, 
the whole flashlight is useless. Yes, that makes for a tank of a flashlight having that built-in battery, but man, you know, if even if this runs out in the field somewhere or if I'm out somewhere where I can't charge it, this thing is useless once again because I can't just simply unscrew the tail cap and plop in another 21700. I have to basically pack two flashlights. And I know that's not going to be a big deal for some. You're probably not going to pack this for a camping trip, but it still would have been nice to have that removable battery just so I can replace it and then have a fresh charge. Now let's talk about this holster because I've been carrying it with the holster and I thought this was kind of silly at first. When you put it in there, you got this goofy little bottom right here. It doesn't really fit. It's just all open. But after carrying this for a little bit, I never had any accidental activations or anything like that because it's kind of hard to activate that light with this bottom being the way it is. And on top of that, if I had to quickly use the flashlight, I can just open up the flap and press through the open end down there and activate the flashlight. But yet still, I am not a fan of these types of holsters, so I'm glad that they gave us an included pocket clip here, and I will put this on just so you guys can see what it looks like here. So it's gonna be a lens down carry, as you can see right there. But because it's under five inches long, this thing's pretty chunky. What is the head diameter of this bad boy again? It's 1.57 inches in diameter on the head here, so it's pretty chunky. It has a little bit of weight to it. So having this in my pocket wasn't the most comfortable thing in the world either. And yes, I'm aware this is meant to be a tactical flashlight, not an EDC flashlight, but I'm not a weapons channel. I'm not gonna mount this to anything to show you guys what it looks like. I'm just reviewing this flashlight from a normal guy standpoint that, yeah, I'm just gonna take this, either put it in the holster or put it in my pocket. And from either one of those standpoints, I'm just saying that it wasn't the most comfortable flashlight to carry around. All right, now let's start talking about the dual tail switches right here. So I am a Fan of Nikkor's turbo ready pedal button on the bottom here. So of course this top button right here activates on or off and it does have a momentary silent on or off if you just short press it in and let it go. Or if you want it to constantly stay on as standard practice, you just hard press it. And now I get the chance to show you guys the status light indicator right there next to the on off button on the top there. That light will flash when it's charging and it'll be steady when it's fully charged. So I am a fan of Nikkor's dual tail switch design. This pedal switch right here that switches the modes is flush with the tail cap right here. So looking at it like this, you couldn't even tell that it's dual tail switches, but this on off switch right here sticks out pretty darn far. And yes, because of this design, you cannot tail stand this and that is another one of my negatives here. I'm a big fan of tail standing lights, whether they're tactical or EDC flashlights, and you just can't do that with this flashlight. So let's talk about the modes here. So this is ultra low, 30 lumens, and then as you press the pedal button, it goes to low, 130 lumens, mid at 500 lumens, high at 2000 lumens, and then we can't get to turbo unless we press and hold, oh my God that pedal switch right there. So you can just keep cycling through the normal modes, ultra low, low, mid, high, and then it goes right back to ultra low, 30 lumens. So anybody that was wishing for a one lumen moonlight, it's not gonna be here. The lowest lumens is 30. So that's as low as we're gonna get right here. Now, because they say this is turbo ready, you can activate turbo from an off position by holding down that pedal switch, or if it's on by holding it down. So no matter, if it's on or off, you can just hold it down and get that burst of 9,800 lumens and that sucker is bright. And the same deal with strobe. So to get the strobe, you just have to double tap that pedal switch here. I'm gonna do that away from camera. So double tap when it's off. There you go, tap it once to turn it off. Or if it's on, double tap and there's our strobe. That kills me every time. And now on screen, I'm gonna pop up the graph that shows the runtime. Ultra low is 60 hours. Low is 14 hours, mid is four hours, high you get three hours, but under turbo you can see there is no runtime information. Now that's because you don't get very long of a runtime on turbo with this flashlight. And at the same time, because you have to press and hold to get the turbo, there is no constant on for turbo. So that's probably why they left it off that graph here. But in some of the tests I've done before shooting this video, I was only getting about 10 to 15 seconds of turbo while I was holding down this pedal button. And it was getting very, very hot because it's just a small little sub five inch body. There's nowhere for the heat to really go. So as as always, I'll be testing out the runtime on turbo and just how hot this head gets 
while running on turbo. But I'll be doing that very, very shortly once I'm done talking about these dual tail switches and a couple of the extra features here, such as, yes, it does have a memory. So if I turn it on, there's ultra low, there's low, turn it off, turn it back on, it goes right back to low. And yes, it does have a lockout feature, but Nightcore has one of my least favorite lockout features in a flashlight. So let me show you guys exactly how to lock out this flashlight, just so there's no confusion. You have to press and hold the on off button, then let it go, then hold the pedal button down. Then while you're holding down the pedal button, press and let go of the on off switch again. Let all the buttons go, then it'll flash, then you're locked out. That's confusing as hell, so I'm just gonna show you. Press, press down, let it go, boom, flashes, now we're locked out. Did you get that? Some of you guys might not think that's a big deal, but for someone like me who carries multiple flashlights such as Phoenix and Olight and Prometheus, they all have different lockout functions and mainly they're all pretty much the same. This has a very confusing sequence that you have to perform and I just don't like it. And on top of that, you don't use the same sequence to unlock it. You have to triple press the mode button, this pedal switch right here to unlock it. So one, two, three, there you go, now it's unlocked. Now if you carry this every single day and this is your only flashlight, you'll probably have that memorized, but for most of us who are flashlightaholics and carry multiple flashlights, they all have different lockout sequences and I think that's just a little overboard. All right, so now it's time for the turbo test slash heat test. And since there is no constant turbo, I'm gonna have to sit here and hold this down until it clicks over to high. So that's gonna kinda suck, but I'm gonna have to do it. So I'm gonna try to do this at the exact same time. And it's not gonna last, usually this is a two minute test, but it's not gonna last two minutes. So ready, go. Oh, kinda jumbled it there. Did you see that? So it already clicked off. That was about eight seconds. I'll put the time on the screen right now exactly when that step down the high. I'm gonna let it rest here for a second and I'm gonna do that again. All right, so it's been about a minute. I'm gonna reset that and I'm gonna try to do this exactly at the same time. I kind of fumbled it last time and go. Okay, that was about six seconds and the temperature right now is 112.8 at the head and about 95.5 at the body. So yeah, this thing gets extremely hot, over 112 degrees after about, what was that, six to eight seconds. So right now I can hold it right here at the uh, body, but at the head it's feeling a little bit better now. That's one nice thing, that's one positive. It, it does cool off relatively fast. But if I sit here and do this over and over again until the turbo goes off, it's gonna get really hot uh, to the point where I probably can't even hold it with my bare hands. Okay, it keeps going off about the same time. And the head here, woo, 100 and 43.2. So that was about four times of doing turbo. And man, this thing is blazing, blazing hot. I can still hold the body with my hands, but I basically have to hold it down here because anything above this is too hot to hold with my bare hands. So as I said in the beginning of this video, this bad boy is a monster. It is super bright for being under five inches. But the negative of this flashlight is if you have to use turbo over and over again, to see around you for whatever reason. Say you have to do it for 30 seconds. You have to press and hold this down for 30 seconds. It's gonna be about 140 degrees because that heat, because of the small body, has nowhere to escape. It's certainly nice that you get that burst of 9,800 lumens on turbo, but this is a 2,000 lumen flashlight with a burst of 9,800 lumens. All right, so now it's time to take this bad boy outside and show you guys some beam shots. You're gonna see I have a few different beam tests thrown in there. The beam test that you can see was in a parking lot was just from my recent vacation out to Hudson Valley. So that's gonna look a little bit different from the beam test I'm doing now out at my local park. You're definitely gonna be able to tell the difference between the two because the first one was taken with my iPhone. The ones I'm doing now are with my Panasonic GH5. But that's enough talk. Let's take this outside.
Okay, well, what can I say about this flashlight here? So you guys saw those beam shots. There's no doubt that this thing puts out a ton of light even if it's only for eight seconds or so. And this will definitely not be mistaken for a thrower. This is a very, very floody light. On turbo with those 9800 lumens, it just lit up everything around me. So if you're looking for a floodlight, at least a 2000 lumen floodlight that can go up to 9800 lumens for about eight seconds or so, there you go. And I don't know if you guys saw or not, but there was a few occasions where I had it on turbo, it stepped down to what I believe is high, and then it even stepped down again from that high to, I think, medium. I mean, there's no information in the user manual about step down, so I'm just guessing it went from turbo, then it went to high, and then it stepped down again from high just because of how hot this was getting. Now, I've honestly never seen that before. I've never seen a step down from high just because of turbo got the head so hot, but I think this is the first one. But I'll tell you what, at 2000 lumens, it was putting out plenty of light. And if you just need to hit turbo real quick to see what's over there and then let it go, eight seconds, remember, this isn't a bad light, but you know, advertising 9,800 lumens has become pretty gimmicky these days with some of these flashlight companies. They'll advertise very high lumens, only give you about eight to 10 seconds of turbo and you just have to look at, okay, well, what's high? It's 2000 lumens, 2000 lumen flashlight. As a 2000 lumen flashlight at 159, 160 bucks, pretty pricey for what it is. I think it's still a solid choice for a flashlight, especially if you're looking for a very compact flashlight because this is pretty small. But for me personally, as an EDC flashlight, I don't recommend it. It's just a little bit too heavy, uh, a little bit too chunky around here at the head and the fact that you can't replace the battery easy just kills it for me. But as a tactical flashlight, I can see its advantages and I would definitely recommend it for that. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. What do you think of the TM9K TAC from Nightcore? Now, if you guys wanna check this out for yourself, I will have links below in my description box. But if you did enjoy this video, please give me that thumbs up. Please subscribe and go!